Hi there everybody, Michael Valenti here with the School of Self-Defense in Indianapolis. And in today's video, we are going to be addressing the very common statement that you should simply run away in any self-defense situation. So let me start this off with a story that locally in Indianapolis where I live, uh, someone broke into this lady's house and she was a die hard sword collector. So she took a katana from her wall and she ended up cornering the guy with this katana and called the cops and kept him there with the katana. And so this was like a really crazy story about someone defending themselves in a really unique way and defending their property in a really unique way. And the local news called me up because they wanted me to make a statement on the situation. In particular, they were really wanting me to kind of give some advice about what someone can do in a similar sort of situation. And they were a little bit disappointed with my initial response because the first thing I told them was, you should leave your house. That if somebody breaks into your house and you're all alone, the best thing for you to do is to leave your house, to slip out a window or slip out the back door. Um, it's always better just to leave. And they were a little frustrated with that answer because they wanted like a cool, sick kung fu move to teach people how to defend your house. And so then I said, well, okay, well, if you can't leave your house, here's some things that I kind of like listed like an order of priorities that you would want and so on and so forth. Um, but all the time when I'm going through the comments on this YouTube channel, or if I'm just talking to average Joes about self-defense, there's always this sentiment in which people say, you don't need self-defense, don't be a fool, just run away, just run away. Um, especially in kind of like the videos that I have that are like judo versus jujitsu, which is better for self-defense, or jeet kune do versus wing chun, what's the difference? People tend to comment, why, did, why do any of this just run away? And I think that shows a really narrow-minded view of what self-defense is. Most self-defense situations are not situations that you can run away from. Actually, for the most part, if you can run away from the situation, I wouldn't even define it as self-defense. Let me elaborate on that before you start typing though. So let's assume that you are at a bar and a guy shoves you and says like, you looking at my girl, um, and you have an opportunity to say, I, nope, I wasn't, I'm sorry, and I'm leaving now, and just walk out the door, but instead, you choose to stay and fight. That fight that you're having right there is not self-defense. That's what we would call street fighting, and street fighting is illegal, it is stupid, and it's something that we don't condone here at my school. Let me give you another situation. Perhaps you are um, going down the street and someone calls out to you some insult, some name, or maybe even hollers at your girl, and you decide to say, hey, buddy, fuck you, I'm gonna go over there, and I'm gonna kick this guy's ass. That's also not self-defense. That is a street fight. You have chosen to fight. It's important to define that self-defense only happens when uh, one party wants to commit an act of violence and the other one doesn't want to commit an act of violence. If both of you want to fight each other, it is no longer self-defense and that's no longer my realm of expertise. I don't care about street fighting. That's not what I teach, nor is it what I concern myself with. Self-defense is when you don't want to fight, where the fight is forced upon you. And in that case, by that very definition, most self-defense situations do not have running as an option because if violence is forced upon you, then that means all other avenues of escape have been eliminated, which means you could not talk your way out of it, so you didn't have de-escalation skills, you couldn't avoid it, through movement, and you couldn't simply run away. One thing we misunderstand about self-defense is that we always think about self-defense in like a bar fight or um, a street fight, but that makes up a, fr a very small percent. I've seen some stats as low as only 10% of self-defense situations actually are like a bar fight. And even then, those may not qualify as self-defense. They may be street fights. 
The far more likely scenario is that a girl is in her dorm room uh, making out with her boyfriend. He wants to take it a little further, she doesn't, and he doesn't take no for an answer. That's self-defense. I don't know if you know this, that girl can't just run away in that situation. That she's stuck there and she very well may have to protect herself. Another example may be that um, a father goes to confront his son about his drug use and as he goes to confront his son, his son swings on him. Well, that's not a situation that that man can just walk away from. He's going to have to have some way to control his son um, in a way that hopefully doesn't hurt his son, but also will keep him safe. Um, if he just runs away in that situation, he's leaving his house in chaos. Another example of self-defense may be, let's just take that home invasion situation one more time. Well, that lady, she was in an apartment, so there was only one exit in the entire apartment. That was her front door, and that's where the guy was. Well, that's not a situation that she can run away from. Hopefully, you're seeing this theme here, that whereas, yes, absolutely, if you have an opportunity to run away from a street fight, then do so, because it's not self-defense to fight if you could have gotten out of it. If you could have gotten out of it, then you are street fighting, and I don't condone that. But the vast majority of self-defense situations, you cannot simply run away. And so if your game plan is to run away, then you grossly misunderstand what self-defense actually is. You are probably thinking self-defense is a street fight, or what I define as a street fight. When in reality, a self-defense situation inherently is something that you could not run away from, and that is why you have to fight. No doubt, if you have an opportunity to run, run. But there are situations, another great example would be um, if you had to protect someone else. So let's say you see a man hitting a woman. Do you just run away or do you go and restrain him? Well, if you don't have the tools to restrain him, then you cannot help that woman. And that's a situation that I would say would be um, amoral to ignore. If you see a woman being beaten, you are a bad guy if you don't stop her from being beaten. Um, and if you don't have the skills to do so, then you're forcing yourself in that situation. So I could go on and on and on on this one point, but that basically summarizes what I'm trying to make out here is that running away should always be your first avenue of escape from any kind of violence. But there are far more situations in the world of self-defense that involve you not being able to run away or where running away would be a amoral thing. So from where I'm standing, whenever somebody says, I don't need self-defense because I will just run away, I think that they just inherently don't understand what self-defense is or what kind of self-defense situations my school specifically focuses on. We focus on things like being mugged, being um, a, having to control somebody, being, uh, we deal with domestic violence, domestic abuse situations, having to deal with weapons. There's a lot more to it than just good old fisticuffs. That's the fun part of martial arts, but that's not really what self-defense is. Self-defense, unfortunately, is a lot more complicated than just running away. If you would be interested in learning the best self-defense in Indianapolis, um, all the information you need to get started is on our website, theschoolofselfdefense.com. We also have a limited amount of availability for our digital classes. All you need is like a heavy bag or like a bob, something like this. It's not the same as coming to the classes, but if there's no good martial arts near you, it's definitely better than doing nothing. So until next time, everybody. Um, <clears throat> So if you're interested in that, all the information is also on our website. So until next time, everybody, I'm Michael Valenti with the School of Self-Defense. Fight on.